Hello, this is Dr. Jeff Craig, Superintendent of West Aurora Schools, and welcome to podcast number 23. Today we are featuring Lynn Head. Mrs. Head has had quite a tenure with School District 129, which includes having served as a paraprofessional, office professional, assistant director, and currently our director of transportation. Welcome, and thanks for joining us today, Lynn. Thank Look, you for having me, Dr. Absolutely. Craig. Looking forward to a great conversation this morning. You know, we this is this is our last installment of this school year, and you know, I'm sure you'll probably tell me we've saved the best for last, and and we'll go with that. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but I think this is a great way to wrap up our season this year uh, because I think obviously you're I don't know if it's obvious or not, but you are on retirement track, uh, which will be in the coming months, and uh, filling your uh, role will be a challenge. Um, so let's get into that. You've you served District 129 for over 34 years. But you also have a longer story than your employment here. Can you talk a little bit about your history with not only our district, but our community? I actually am the fourth of five generations of Aurorans. We came in to uh, Aurora. It's questionable. It might be 1870s. I grew up on the west side. I went to McCleary, Jefferson, West Aurora South. There's a shout out. And West Aurora North Campus. And that's where I graduated from. We have three generations of my family that have worked for the school district. My father, who taught at Jefferson, my mom, who at that time they were called secretaries, worked Uh at Todd. And then when Todd closed for the first time, she went over to Greenman. Um, My sister, who was an administrator and also a dean. My brother, who was a custodian, and now my daughter, who's an assistant director. So people kind of jokingly say that I bleed red and blue, and it's definitely, I'm a West Sider through and through. That's quite the lineage. You know, uh, some of our folks will chuckle when you mention the North Campus, but others will scratch their head because they don't understand what that means. So if you could give us a little bit of the significance of the North Campus uh, then and now, and then talk a little bit about, um, as you recollect, whether it's McCleary, Jefferson, West High, some of your uh, more poignant moments that kind of still stick with you. I jokingly tell people that I went to IMSA, where IMSA was, and they're like, you went to IMSA? And I'm like, (laughs) well, it was West Aurora North Campus. At the time, I spent two years at South, Um, It was a very interesting time because of my father being an educator in the district. They had split shifts at that time. Ah, Yeah, lots of kids. And because my father didn't believe that I should go to school at 11 o'clock in the morning, I went from school from 8 o'clock to I think it was 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon every day my freshman and sophomore year. And um, my junior year, the cutoff for North Campus was Illinois Avenue. So many of the students that were my friends since elementary school, I ended up not graduating with. They went to South and I went to North, which is now IMSA. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, and people don't realize that was an era in the 70s and 80s when there was lots of school age kids throughout our region. And you referenced the split shifts. That was to accommodate just the burgeoning number of students we had. And it was just a way to accommodate them in a singular building. Ergo, we built North Campus. And then when the numbers receded, we ended up selling it back to IMSA, uh, the current day uh, use. So thank you for that history lesson. <laughs> but some of our folks just aren't used. They don't understand what some of those means. And you're right. We had, you know, 14 period days and they split the kids off seven periods each. So interesting way of approaching education. Yeah, I actually graduated as a junior, but I thought, what the heck, I'm going to experience my senior year. There you go. And you talk about the activities. I, My fondest memories are all the activities that I was in. I was in uh, student council. I was in pom-poms. I was... When you just met, referenced before, the, the musical. And the musical. And still remember yeah. those, those those moments uh, clearly. My, my fondest teacher would have been um, Mr. Denny Robertson, who I was the editor of our yearbook, and he was my advisor. I learned so much about photography from him and the ability to edit, and he really taught me how to write more oh. than anybody that I ever, ever had in school in the English department because he had a really fascinating twist with the English language. Sure. It was really fun. Yeah. 
That's interesting that you remember that. You know, I hope that every student that, that graduates, uh, we've got our high school graduation coming up on Sunday, but I hope every one of those students has a, a staff member that they can uh, think back to uh, over time and just remember them for being a positive influence in their life. Any other staff members, coaches, sponsors that uh, kind of ring true in your mind? As far as a student or as, a, as an adult? Either one. Um, as we, we also talked about, I had a, a coach, Jenny Hester, at Jefferson. And um, at that time, I was a track student. And that was the beginning of Title IX being used. Uh-huh. So as a seventh grader, we didn't have a lot of female sports. But in eighth grade, then we really ramped up sports in our in our school and by eighth grade I was actually running faster than the seniors at West High and and track that's impressive Um, and it was all because of her um techniques and coaching abilities um she was wonderful absolutely a wonderful leader as far as a coach and and mentor you know it's it's, it's awesome that you have those <clears throat> recollections because I think it's so important that, you know, we, we always talk about every student should have at least one adult that they can go to and trust. And it sounds like you had several of those positive experiences, which is Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. As far as as an adult, as we joke, I've been around. I've been here a long time. And I have really appreciate, has, have you been the superintendent for how long now? This is year eight. The, the last eight years have been the best eight years that I have worked here. Under your leadership and under Angie Smith's leadership, I have really, really feel that transportation has come to the forefront of this district and is really being heard. Angie always puts in my head that we do everything to make sure that kids are for the best for the children And for their education, where jokingly, I'm kind of the no girl of the district. And um, I always make sure that it's always for the best for kids. And I can't tell you how much you and Angie have done so much for me and my ability to lead properly in this district. That's That's a high compliment. And we'll graciously accept. So thank you for saying that. Well, you're welcome. Um, you may kick me under the table here in a little bit, but uh, I'll take the nicety at this time. <laughs> there you go. So let's let's go to you talk reference your professional capacity. So let's talk a little bit about that. You know, I, I'm not sure that people see transportation other than a vehicle that transports our students from point A to point B. Maybe it's from home to school. Maybe it's school to an event, school to home, whatever it might be. I mean, that's that's the I mean, if they had a job description, your job description is to transport large quantities of kids from this point to this point in a safe manner. I think the part that that probably isn't as recognizable or as thought about other than by you and your folks is that our bus drivers, our monitors are the first faces that our kids see in the morning. Sometimes it's 630, 7 o'clock, 730, whatever it might be. And sometimes they're the last faces that our kids see of an afternoon or of an evening, depending on their activities. And I'm not sure that our, even our, our drivers and monitors are as cognizant of the, the impact that they can have on our kids. If a student arrives and maybe they had a rough morning at home and they show up to the bus stop and they start to get board the bus, that greeting or that experience can set the tone for those students for the entire day. Or... Yes. Could be a negative or could be a positive. Mm -hmm. So here's my question. I recognize the significance of that impact on our kids each and every day, positive or negatively. If you can talk about, A, your expectations of drivers and monitors and how they they receive and respond to kids and, and the training that they receive to be able to do that on a consistent basis. We, as a district, always want to make sure that the children, as you stated, are recognized when they enter a bus. So we have numerous videos. Some of them are really fun. Some of them are instructional that we show different stories of how children react when they Uh, get on the bus 
when they're greeted and when they're not greeted on a bus. I always say, and I stress to all my employees that know your kids' names. Yeah, absolutely. Children tend to respect and follow rules if you know who they are. And greeting them by name is a bonus. We work really hard on making sure that when we have kids that get on, I can't tell you how many times that the driver will say, I think we've got someone who's not feeling well. I would like to have a nurse when we get to the school. Johnny has a bloody nose. We talk about how to take care of that. There isn't anybody else on that bus but that driver, unless it's a special ed route, then they have a monitor to take care of those kids. And we stress to our drivers and our monitors that they're there to make sure that the kids are safe. As far as teaching, it's through um, reminders, videos, and et cetera, that we do that. But I, you know, and I, and I know that you've kind of given the broad picture of that, but I know that it's, it's something that you are very purposeful about with our staff to, to not just give it lip service on August 18th and then hope that carries until the end of May. Um, It's something that we have to continually remind ourselves, remind them, um, especially when we have some of our folks. It's a it's almost a climate and a culture within that bus that then lends itself to our school. It's those, you know, those behaviors that we exhibit, um, what we believe and those experiences we give and receive for those kids that certainly makes a big difference. Absolutely. Well, we can really make a we can send those kids off with a half a smile on their face and a pleasant experience or they can start off hitting that school door and just be ready for for battle. Correct. And and that's what we really do stress. And I use the example uh, one day I uh, ignored people <laughs> when they came in. And then when I got on the radio, I, I gave the example of how did that feel? Oh, uh, yeah. How did that feel that I pretty much ignored you this morning? Please don't do that to your students because that that is how they would feel if that upset you at all. Yeah, great reminder. A great hello is a great hello. So you very eloquently and and, uh, kindly referenced these past eight years in terms of your experience. We've made some technical and uh, structural advancements uh, with not only the types of buses that we utilize, but some of the technology that we provide safety and and some type of monitoring systems for our drivers and for our students. Can you highlight some of those those improvements that we've uh, integrated into our transportation fleet? My goodness, it's been it's been wonderful all the things that uh, have changed for us in the last 8 years. We're actually on a refre- uh, lease cycle for our school buses. None of our buses are older than 2 years. It's made a big change for our department in the fact that we don't have buses breaking down all the time. We have the same bus consistently picking children up. We used to have six, seven, eight bus number changes in a day because this one would break and we get that one fixed and the next one was breaking and it's the rust. It Again, it's kind of the same scenario as the saying hello and saying goodbye to the students. If they get on the bus and the bus is clean and the bus looks nice and, and there's not any rust and everything looks brand spanking new or, or so super clean that th- there's a respect thing there. They want to respect the bus and the safety component is unbelievable. I mean, we would get, we would have so many problems uh, that would just arise because something just rusted between the six month checkups, as we call them, uh, that buses have to go through. We have exceptional GPS now. So we know where a bus is at all the time live. That has made huge strides where if we have a child that they were at the bus stop, we have a sub, the sub misunderstood the directions, we can get that driver back there because we can see actually where they're at. That's pretty uh, pretty incredible. And if I am correct, you, we can see how fast they're traveling. 
see how fast they're traveling, if they stop at stop signs, uh, if they stop at the railroad crossings. All those safety aspects that you reference. Correct. And we also have new GPS, which is is, um, called Push to Talk. It would be similar to the old Nextels, but ours are on microphone. They don't hand hold those. And um, for us, it's made a big difference in the fact that that works all over. So if we're in Chicago, we still have service where it used to be you pretty much got past Downers Grove and that was it. They were out in no man's land and we couldn't help you in an emergency. That's really good. You know, a um, couple of things that you prompt me to think about. You talk about the that environment kids walk into. It's clean. It looks good. It's functioning well. It sends that message. But I think it sends a message to our public because we have right across those big yellow buses, West Aurora School District. Absolutely. Every day and all over our community. And if, uh, if they're breaking down or look pretty bad shape, look rough, people... That's a connotation they have of us. So it's just like walking into our school. Right. If it looks sharp, we look sharp. I do want to mention my new parking lot, as I call it mine. (laughs) The school district's new parking lot. The transportation department, because I've been there forever, used to be at West Aurora High School under the stadium. We moved up to North Aurora in 2005. And uh, the entire area where the buses were parked was on blacktop. Yes. And over time, the weight of the school buses made large, what would you call that? Pits. Pits. Yeah. And we've had some very interesting winters, it seems like lately, where it rains and then goes below zero. And we were, the pits were filling with water. And then that's where the pits are is where the tires land. Yeah. That's why they sink. And, uh, we were not able to get buses out, so now we are on cement pads for all the buses. And this last winter was wonderful. It was wonderful for Louis because we called it the porpoise. Louis, your mechanic. Louis, our mechanic, yes. and he does our snow removal. Yes. And you would see Louis in his truck kind of porpoising down the parking lot. And this year he said he felt much better when he was done snow um, plowing. So it's you know, been for, great. For our folks to visualize that, so put this in context, we have a we have a transportation center that has that houses all the employees when they come in. It houses our mechanical systems, all of our repairs, cleaning, all that. How many buses do we have? How many, you know, talk about the... The big, the large capacity yellow buses, the smaller capacity, the activity buses we have over there. So all of our fleet, how many drivers and monitors do we have in our district? Drivers, monitors, mechanics, mechanic assistants, and our mail delivery person all work under transportation. And at the present time, we have 106 employees. Okay. And how many buses do we have? We have 46 regular buses and 32 special ed buses. So not small. Not small. That's a lot to a lot to keep track of and keep people moving in the right spots. And and you know, I think one of the things it gives people probably you know it's transportation. It's transportation until transportation isn't functioning well. And as soon as that the bus doesn't show up or there's you know there's a, a glitch in the system, now transportation is pretty critical. Well, as you well know, this year I um, had a few concerns and was quite anxious. Sometimes during the school year, we're fortunate that we are fully staffed. And I can't believe that we made it the whole year. We never had a bus disruption because of COVID um, or lack of staff in transportation. And I know you knew I was a little anxious about that. Things got a little dicey at times, but everybody rose to the occasion in my department and we were able to get the kids to school every day. And that's a significant commentary uh, because, and I'm not sure some of the folks listening understand that our scenario, our environment of having our own drivers, our own buses, isn't, that isn't across the the state. That isn't, everyone doesn't function that way. Um, Some districts contract outside So they're dependent on other drivers, other buses to come in and provide those services. 
We do that all internally. They're our employees. They're our vehicles. And as you mentioned, I think over the past two years, probably paid dividends for us to have those relationships, to be able to work directly with that entire group of 106 staff members um, to make sure that our fleet continued performing in the way that we needed them to perform to pick our kids up. So that was a super, super strong point for us. We didn't have to rely on someone else saying we can't provide buses and drivers. And so that's uh, kudos to you and your team um, and working with our, our staff. You know, that's um, that isn't by accident. And uh, not everyone has those. You know, we have our ups and downs with relationships because we're people. Yes. And we're, we're regardless of uh, what people think about educational institutions, large districts, we're still in the people business. Absolutely. And, and I know you mind that well. Thank you. Yes. So you, you talk a little bit about the, uh, the challenges of supporting uh, our drivers, our, our, our parents, and our kids throughout the pandemic. Um, and you are, as you mentioned earlier, you are a, um, a member of our senior leadership team. Um, and for those that aren't totally sure of how that, that structure looks like, that's the superintendent, assistant superintendents, directors, and assistant directors. Uh, we meet twice a month. And uh, that's our way to be able to organize ourselves, uh, help solve problems, uh, provide inputs and feedbacks. So you've talked about your tenure here, your longevity, not only as a student, um, a community member, but as a, uh, a very integral uh, staff member here and a leader in our district. Soon. Yes. It will be time for your next phase of life. Yes. Uh, probably, you know, at this time you're thinking it can't come here fast enough. And then you know, it gets closer, you go, oh, my gosh, it's here. So what does that next chapter look like for you? What does your phase of life encompass? Number one, I won't have to be to work at either 530 or 6 o'clock in the morning there anymore. There you go. I'm a night girl. And uh, that will be my the biggest Ah, it's going to be exciting. As far as my next chapter, I'm actually going to leave Aurora, and which I don't know. It'll be interesting how well I do at that. Um, I'm going to be moving to Florida, at which time um, I've hemmed around about if I want to, you know, I, I was a reading tutor for years, if I want to get back into doing some reading, um, tutoring. I've uh, had two companies reach out to me um, to consult as far as transportation is concerned. But I think, really, I'm ready to play golf. I, I am an avid swimmer. I just want to be able to swim and golf. And I think I might just retire, retire. Enjoy life. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you, and it's well-deserved. Thank you. You know, sometimes we don't think about it until the moment is here, but people will have their opinions, perspectives, thoughts about your leadership, your humanness. What do you hope people will remember you for? How, do you, how would you like to be remembered? I think that I would like to be remembered as what I did for this district was for the students hmm. foremost, staff second as well as the taxpayers. Um, that's Students have always been my priority and how we can best make sure that they have a safe and really good education. And that's how it starts is with me and my, awesome. and my group, not just me. And probably, as I said earlier, they may not remember and say, geez, I had a safe bus trip every day, but maybe they'll remember I didn't have any oopses or upsets um, and thankful for arriving to and from home and school. It's interesting because adults will come up to me and say, did you work there when Miss Mary worked there or Mr. Bill or um, it's very it's very fun. They light up because they're so excited about that memory of their bus driver. Absolutely. And um, I hope that the, that continues. Last question. Yes. Um, as you are wrapping up your career, um, knowing that you have given notice to us and our board of your uh, intention to retire, we had a process. We have sought out and identified your successor. So if you were to be able to just eyeball the eyeball with your successor, how would you advise her 
to be successful in this role? I always say, and it's funny that that it, it makes me smile because I always say, remember, West is best. It's it's my mantra. It's the way I am. I told her that you need to listen to the staff, the community, and as a side joke, don't always say no. It's a great, great piece of advice. Lynn, it's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you. Um, and thank you for the conversation today. And uh, I know people will, will love the history lesson and uh, think of you fondly because uh, I know you've been around a long time and influenced a lot of people. Thank you. And that legacy will live forward. So thanks for all that you do. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So I would ask that uh, please remember that you can find us wherever you get your podcasts, including iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and the TuneIn Radio app. I would encourage you to subscribe to our broadcast. Please give us feedback so we can continue to improve our discussions. This is our final podcast of the 21-22 school year, and we'll see you in the fall. Thank you. <music>